Welcome, Joe. Um, Joe is a rancher and auctioneer from Billings, Montana. He's a native Montanan who, in addition to working on his family's ranch, has auctioneered for some of the top purebred sales in America and remains directly involved in his family's livestock auction market. He is the owner of j &L Livestock, which mer merchandises from 3,000 to 5,000 top bred commercial Angus females annually. His family's three livestock auction yards and Northern Livestock Video Auction is often cited as a primary influencer in the cash cattle market across the nation. We're proud to have him because he's not only an active Montanan, he's also a regular at North Dakota's bull sales, most notably uh, Ellingson uh, Angus in St. Anthony, or St. Anthony, as you're supposed to say, but they say St. Anthony. Um, Fry Angus in Granville, um, Prairie Pine, uh, Pride in Enderlin, Schaff Angus Valley at St. Anthony, and uh, Stubber Ranch in, in Bowman. And we really appreciate your involvement in North Dakota, and I know you know that we produce some of the best bulls in, in the world. His reach into the cattle industry extends nationwide with his family's widely sub subscribed publication, The Western Ag Report. Continuing to be an active member in the livestock industry, he served one term as president of Montana's Livestock Marketing Association and two terms as president of Montana Angus Association. He's currently the director of the Livestock Marketing Association and a member of, of the United States Cattlemen's Association. Joe remains very involved in the web and flow of the cattle market. With all of that on his plate, he and his family are still able to help market 600,000 head of cattle annually, along with his wife Linda and his three children and 250 employees uh, who help him through that process. Quite a record of achievement. Um, uh, welcome to the committee. We look forward to your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member. Um, it's been an interesting dialogue, and uh, I want to make maybe a couple points before I start getting into high-frequency trading, and one of the reasons why I particularly was interested in, in this hearing, which is the cattle market. Um, first off, a lot of the challenge here is your relationship to your consumers, whether we're talking about new regulations or in organics, whether we're talking about antibiotic regulations, we've got to have more informed consumers. And that's been one of our challenges, which is try and maintain a, a readily available, uh, high quality food source in this country that people accept as high quality and accept as, as uh, as available to them. And you know, I would I would challenge you that we're as we're dealing with these challenges, you need to deal directly with consumer challenges. Because even if we eliminate the regulation, I have a feeling that consumers are going to continue to demand a label that then becomes voluntary and um, takes us to a place where um, we erode the um, availability of high quality food. I, th I think there's some real challenges in all of this, but uh, you know, where everybody points a finger at government, I would suggest that this movement didn't start in the, at USDA, it didn't start in this committee. This movement started as a consumer information movement. And if your only response to this is you don't need to know, I will tell you as producers you'll lose. Um, you know, when if, if we said that to our constituents, well, you don't really need to know what our position is on that, we'd probably lose too. And so um, these are challenges. I've supported the chairman and I've supported, um, you know, trying to get to some kind of um, preemption for label, but I'm, I remain frustrated that we haven't been able to really um, drill down and, and do a better job um, involving consumers in, in this discussion. I also, Mr. Brunner would tell you, I held a hearing or a meeting last week, and one of the answers to the concerns about the cattle market was reestablishing cool. Um, so it, we know that's not a unanimous opinion um, within the, the cattle industry. But my, my main focus, I hope, will be on how do we get trust back into the cattle market. And I know you've just been, uh, your organization, Mr. Brunner, has done yeoman's work with uh, Chicago Mercantile. Um, they're trying some things right now that they think may help um, kind of correct the market. I think, Mr. Goggins, you know what this has cost cattlemen in my country and in Montana. You understand what these fluctuations have meant. Um, 
what else should we be doing with um, the cattle markets to um, bring back people back into the markets and stop what I think is speculation and start getting to a, a real cash price that reflects fundamentals? Let's start with ms you, Mr. Brunner. Well, as I said in my opening comments, we're, we're in the situation of growing cattle numbers, growing beef supplies, and and not access, not competitive market access to the markets that we need. Uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership would would uh, increase our ability to compete on a competitive basis with Australia and to Japan. We've already lost three hundred million dollars into that market, and and the disparity will continue to grow because. Uh, Japan and Australia have a, a bilateral agreement that get, grants them preferential treatment. So well, I, I start every one of my discussions about trade saying 95% of all potential consumers in the world do not live in this country. I if believe you that's think very we accurate. can continue to, to, to be a country that's a dominant economic power without accessing markets, we're wrong. Mm -hmm. If you don't think we need to lower trade barriers, you're wrong, especially for the products that we grow in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. Mr. Goggins, can you just, just offer some insights on, on the current um, problems that we have in the cattle market and um, what we should be doing to fix them? Oh, I, I, I think there's, there's quite a few things that are contributing to uh, what we've gone through. Uh, I mean, I think the strength of the U.S. dollar right now has prohibited our ability to export our product, not just beef, but commodities in general. Uh, I think there's a, a, a huge problem has been the volatility in the uh, in the futures board market. I, I just I, so I, how do we fix that? I'm not real sure. I I, I think things like these folks are doing and, and and people within the industry as far as working with the CME and coming up with some way to uh, slow the market down. So, so so wouldn't you agree that it's a problem when I, I think the number that was used was about a fourth of all cattle actually move through the market this way on, on a cash basis, but yet establishes the price. And, and that's, a, that's a, you know, when you have a thin market, there is always room for mischief in a thin market when you don't have enough participation. And so my question is, how do we expand participation? And I think there, there's several things going on. And today, as, as right now when we're having this hearing, uh, they're having their first uh, uh, internet sale uh, there's feed yards putting a certain percent of their uh, show list on the uh, sale today, and uh, uh, they'll be sold across that, trying to get a, a, a truer, more immediate, tra more transparent way of uh, of seeing what these cattle are actually worth. Hopefully, we can get more cattle sold uh, on a cash basis because it, it's uh, the cash basis then forwards on to, and that's how we're supposed to uh, make our market on the futures board and. It's uh, right now. There's, there's the, the futures board just does not follow the fundamentals of what cash is bringing, and uh, it, it's really becoming a serious problem. I think, especially from a risk management side, because I think uh, there's been. An, I don't think any of us know the amount of equity that's going to be lost and has been lost, but it's going to be unbelievable yeah, that we see in this deal. And it, the, these bankers, when when I go in or a young person goes in and uh, wants to uh, get a loan, at, uh, these bankers, the lenders are definitely going to make them get a hedge position on that board. So we have to make it a more stable market. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Or people going to move out of the cattle business, mm -hmm. which is just going to compound this. And Mr. Brunner, I'll give you the last comment, but I do want to applaud your your work and, and your association's work with the, with the market. Um, you suggested in the beginning of your testimony that you were not interested in any changes. You guys are going to watch it. But I want you to know that we're watching it very closely. I, I associate myself with Senator Grassley's remarks. We want to know what more we can do to push for a fair and open market so that, so that we don't lose equity and that we don't lose producers. And that it's, this is a tough business. Anyone who thinks it's easy being a rancher in North Dakota, you're wrong. I mean, when you're pulling a calf at two in the morning and there's a snowstorm on the way, that's not an easy life, but it's a life they want to continue living. But if they can't make a living, um, you know, I, 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 that, that's, that's bad for all consumers. It's bad for America. So, Senator, very, very quickly, I think uh, one thing that we're discovering is high frequency trading is, is uh, utilized throughout all financial markets. and. Uh, uh, 
the uh, CFTC ha has told us that uh, uh, they have been uh, observing it as well. I, th I think in many other markets it gets, it gets covered up because cattle are a somewhat unique commodity. We're a perishable commodity. We can't put the grain back in the bin and wait till the market stabilizes. And then uh, I I'd also live, like to give due respect to the, uh, Senator Grassley's uh, figures and, and uh, the uh, information that he supplied. I, I, I wouldn't directly uh, contest any of those, but those are symptoms of an evolving industry that's trying to maintain and increase its competitiveness in a global economy. And as, as we work to try and achieve effic efficiencies within our industry, uh, relationships develop as we coordinate up and down the value chain. So those uh, uh, a decreasing number of of animals trading on a cash market or a spot market is 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 bound to diminish and but it, it is an industry question we're very concerned about it i've been i've been thinking about this worrying about it. it's been going on for 20 years and and we're going to continue to work on it and we will solve it